Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Nate Moore, this is Excel Video 229. I spent some time working with a group today that has an end of the month reporting process. It used to take four days, we're down to one day, we're trying to get it down to an hour. When you're tired of running reports and ready to start acting on them, let's talk. What I want to do today is play with what's called a comma separated value CSV file. I don't see a ton of them as much anymore but particularly for my friends in anesthesia where you got a lot of data come from different hospitals and the import function doesn't always work the way you want or folks in academics where again you got a bunch of different systems and they're trying to share data and they don't always share it in a friendly easy to use way sometimes what they'll do is they'll dump the data you want to a CSV file and what CSV means is here's a simple example this is a test the data is really in four columns but they separate each column with a comma. That's the comma separated values idea. And there's a tool in Excel that makes importing these things really easy. It's a wizard and the way it works is like this. I'm on the data tab and if you go text to columns what it will do is it'll say tell me how your data is set up. Sometimes you'll see fixed width and what that means is every column is 30 characters. 30, 60, 90, 120 and that's the way it goes across. The other typical way to do it is delimited. In other words, there's something in between each column's worth of data. And that's what ours is. We have commas in between. So if we click next here, it's going to say, all right, Nate, this is how it's going to look. We got this is a test on the first one to see how and we can make that whole thing work. And then you can t say if it's not comma delimited, it's not going to figure it out. When you say, yeah, there is a comma, then it gets it. And if you've got issues with hey, I've got commas inside the text, I need to use a different uh, delimiter or something like that, you can use these options. But let's go to next. Now what Excel does is say, okay, I've got four columns worth of data for you, Nate, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to format this one, well, in fact, all four in this example, as general. And all general means is I'm going to do what it looks like, I'm going to, what the data looks like. If it looks like a number, I'm going to make it a number. If it looks like a date, I'm going to make it a date. If it looks like text, I'm going to leave it there and make it text. If I do finish that fast, this is a test to see how test that says test text to columns works. Three rows, four columns, yeah, it's no big deal. Three thousand rows, thirty thousand rows, three hundred thousand rows, it's a huge deal and it's a great shortcut. Let's do another one. On sheet two, I have dates, and so we're going to do the same kind of thing here. Let's pick these three. Because really, if you look at it, see how all the data is really in. This is A1, this is cell A2, this is cell A3. So we're going to select these and do text to columns. I'm still comma delimited. I still have the comma there from last time. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, leave them dates. And month, day, year should work. General is going to pick these guys up. Here we'll do two like that and leave these alone. And it does a pretty good job when dates are normal. You can do them as dates. You can do them as general, and Excel does a pretty good job recognizing dates that look like this as dates. One more. On sheet three, what I have here is I have text, I have John, and then I have a number, and then this is a date, 2002-0102. That's not, you know, the traditional 1 slash 2 slash 2012. I've got it in a different format, and Excel is going to help me get that into a date. And then let's assume this last five-digit uh, well, I don't want to call it a number because let's, let's assume it's a zip code. This, these last five, this last column of data we're going to pick up is a zip code. So if we do something like this, from the data tab, text to columns, it's still delimited. It is still comma delimited. But now what we're going to do is when we see this, we're going to say, all right, leave John alone. I'm okay with that. The names we're going to leave alone. These are numbers, and Excel is going to see that as a number and put that as a number. I'm okay. This one i got to work on. I've got to tell Excel, hey, this is a date and it is in year, month, day format, YMD. And then, on this one, it looks like a number, so Excel's going to want to make these zip codes numbers, or CPT codes, or diagnosis codes, or something like that, We say, no, 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 I don't want those to be numbers, I want those to be text. Just click text. So I've got two generals, a date, and a text, and if I hit finish, now I've got that information here, and then Excel's going to warn me, you know what, Nate, that looks like a number, but I'm storing it as text, and you're Ignore that error. That's exactly what I want. This is a zip code, a CPT code. I've got what I want. That's what I wanted to show you about text to columns. You don't see a ton of it anymore, but particularly in academia, in anesthesia, where you're dealing with data coming from multiple sources and sometimes old systems, you're going to see CSV files. This text to columns also works with TXT files, text files. Same process. You tell me how the data is separated and tell me what kind of format you want this data in when you're done, and Excel will do the rest. 
I hope that was helpful for you. Stay tuned. I've got another way to get data into Excel. Thanks for watching.